Hi, Satvik. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? You did not connect yesterday? Yeah, um, my dad did send me the new link in time. <laughs> Okay, so have you done the homework? The uh, assignment that I gave you on um, classes and objects? Yeah. Okay, can you please paste it so that I may check? Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Cool, I just want to see it. Paste it, please. How do you copy it? You copy it just from uh, it come the all the lines come in just one line. It should be like you just copy it from the eclipse and then paste it directly. This topic. So we are going to discuss about constructors today. Okay, let me see. So it is a uh, You did it yourself? Did you do it yourself, Satvik? I had some help. And may I know who helped you? My dad. Okay. Okay. Let me let me see. So this was the scenario. I just want you to understand it. Right. The motive is to make you understand the concept. Right. How do you write a class? Just say class. Or topic class. Topic class. Account. Um, so what? Then you want some data members? Account number? Print account number? Uh, string? Account string holder? For, yeah. And then account int, holder. And then int amount? Int amount. Okay. And what is there? Uh, it uh, deposit. It deposit. Yeah. 
let's say deposit deposit is one of the methods right so if yeah. you ask how much do you want to deposit if you have used this kind of class or anything like that so there are two ways either you will pass the value here right either you will pass the value to the uh, method or you can just say okay let me um, i'll explain to you further what i saw in your program is you have used the method and uh, in the method you have parameters right so first of all you need to understand the use of static variable right then the use of constructors then how to use the parameterized methods or the constructors i'll explain it to you further so first of all i'll explain the constructor what is a constructor so the moment your uh, program is executed the constructors are executed by default okay it means you don't need to create an instance of your constructor the moment you execute it the program will be executed the constructor will be executed for example class is constructor index y then i will say public you can see the name of this method is same as the name of the class test constructor when you see the name of a method similar to the name of the class so you should understand that this is the constructor one of the properties of a constructor is it will hold the same name as of its class so in this class in this uh, constructor we will initialize the x and y we will initialize the x and y we will say i will explain it to you what is this what is the this keyword i'll explain to you later on and say then then i will say this dot y this is how you initialize so i have initialized this now i'll go to the main part set void main in parts i will just say new s constructor i have not created any object you must have noticed the moment i execute this program it will say system dot out dot internal the value of x and y are plus x plus so it will print the value of x and y the moment i execute this program even if i have not created any object for the class i have just created an instance of the class so that my program will be executed but i have not 
use any object to reference it, to reference the method, like we used to do. in class the name should be same as the name of the class then it will be a constant the moment I will execute this the value of x and y are 10 and 15 ok so is it understandable what is constructor the constructor will help you to initialize your variables. The constructor does it always have to be before the uh, main method? Is it like before the main method? Like Can you please repeat yourself? Start with. The constructors, does it always have to be before the main method? Yes. Okay. The constructor will always be before the main method. Okay. Before the main method. This, this will always be or if you have any other methods, you will keep it. That's the uh, standard way. That's the standard way how, how you code. Okay. Okay, so so basically what you need to understand is um, constructor will help you to initialize the uh, the moment the program is executed it will be it will also be executed. Okay. Now, we, we, this was, uh, so this constructor has not any parameter. In the parenthesis you can see, there is not any parameter. So this is where you have not any parameter in the constructor, that is called default constructor. Okay. Constructors where you see some parameters in the parenthesis for the constructor, that is called parameterized constructor. Okay. In other programming languages like C++, there are three types of constructors. Default, parameterized and copy constructor. But in Java, there are two constructors, default and parameterized, where you have parameters. So we will see how that works now. Any question on it, Sarvik? No. Okay. So, let's understand uh, the other one, like with the parameters. So, we have X and Y here. And uh, so what we are going to do is, I will just write here another constructor that is public. Uh, what's that? Name of the constructor. Okay, so it has two parameters, in um, C and in Q.
now it will so x equals to p and y equals to q i will explain to you why i am doing this and why i'm doing is you are very close and i just explain to you i will create one more instance test new is the keyword that is new is new is the keyword that is used to create instance to class so it has two parameters so i will pass two values and those two values should be integers why because those two values the variables are integer variables that's why i am passing two integers so the moment i execute this first this constructor will be executed which is default and where we have the value for x and y is 10 and 15 10 and 15 in the default constructor in the parameterized the value for the x and y is 12 and 30 okay this 12 and 30 will go to p and q here in p and q so p will become 12 and q will become 30 then these two values will be transferred to x and y and then we are printing here x and y okay understandable satvik yeah So if we run this, the value of x and y are 10 and 15, with the value of x and y are 12 and 30 for so the parameterized one. Okay. So this is the parameterized. This is the default. Parameters, the parts of you know, and what else? So there are a few key points that you need to always keep in mind while using the constructors. A constructor will have always the same name as of its class, and it will never keep the return type. It will never keep the Constructor will never have a return type. What is the return type? Return type means you are returning some item, some sort of data type to it. So it will just say int, like public int display. In public int display, public is the access modifier, int is the return type, and display is the method. Okay. so the constructors will never have any return type any type of return type okay understand it now we will understand what is the public and display mean again so if your voice is not clear Hello. What does that public int display mean? Okay, public. Public is the access modifier. Okay. For an example, you have different packages. You must have. We have created this in default package, right? The name of this package where we are right now coding is a default package. So we have different packages in Java. So if any anything is public that can be accessed from uh, from one package into the another package so if i am saying public test constructor this can also be accessed in any other package 
but first I'll have to import that package here. You must have noticed that we write this import java dot utility dot So first of all, you will need to, if I want to, if I want to, this is in the default package. Um, the name of the package is iPhone test. Let me see. If I go to create a new class, it will say in the test, right? In the test one. No. So this is a default package. There is not any package. So what I want to say is you have two classes. Package one and package two, right? In package one, you have a class and it has that is a public class. Let's say public class. So this public class can be accessed in package two. But while writing in package two while coding, I'll have to import package one and then I can do the package one items in the package two. So I can use the public items now. Got it? We have not done so far the access modifiers but we will do that. I will uh, explain it to you in detail, more detail. Okay, now we will talk about the static keyword. What is the static keyword? Okay, before that, talk about the overloading. Okay. This constructor overload. So I will give you another example and then I will explain to you what is constructor overloading. I'm taking the another variable is that I'll get back to the third constructor that I just created. So x equals to L, i equals to m and z equals to n. X, y So see, we have, I have executed all these three constructors, okay. For the third constructor, I have 12, 13, and 20, okay. When you have multiple constructors with, if with different parameters, when you have multiple constructors with different parameters and you execute them, this is called constructor overloading. Okay. 
even if I put this here, even if I put this at first, The values find the right constructor. I am passing three values here. So it will match the constructor where we have three values, where we have three variables. Getting my point? Where we have two, where we are passing two values, it will match the constructor where we have two variables in the constructor. And then it will be executed. So this is called constructor overloading and uh, where you have multiple constructors but the system, but the program will find uh, the appropriate constructor based on the type of parameters, based on the type or the number of parameters. Okay. Is it clear? A little? As of now? Yeah. Okay. So if it is clear, I will ask you to do some programming stuff. That's why I'm asking. If you have any questions, you can ask me right now. You can ask me later as well, but I want you to understand it first. I got it. Okay. Good. So we'll go further and I will explain the static keyword now, static and the this keyword that we have been using like you can see in the main, we say public static void main. What does it mean? So if you have a variable, If you have any um, in your program for an example, your, uh, your voice is students. Your voice is breaking. If I say okay, is it good now? Yeah. Is it good now? Yeah. Okay. So if I okay, good. So if I say in my school there are 200 students. Now all those students belong to the same school, right? The school X, Y, Z. So school is common to all the students. School is common to all the students. For those kind of entity, for those kind of variables, you can declare them static. If there is some common value, you can declare them static. Okay. It means if something, a variable or a method is shared between all the instances of a class, then that is static. Static keyword will help you to share any common instance, like I just said, a school variable. You can share it with all the students, so you can declare it static. Okay. If any method is static, then you don't need to reference them. Like in the other methods, you must have noticed apart from the constructors, if you access any method, any class method, you need to create an object and then you access them, right? But if a method is static, if, a, if uh, any method is declared static, you will not need to access them. You will not need to create object and reference them. 
like if I say here Generally, what do you do? How do you access it? What you do is generally you say test constructor and then you create an object, then you say new test constructor and then you say obj dot display. This is what we do in general way. Yeah. Right? But here you don't need to do that. Here you don't need to do it. Do, do it this way. You can just say you can just say display. You can just say display. And it will be accessed. This is my static method. I'm not using any object to create an instance of this method. I am accessing it directly. Why? Because it is a static method and that is why the main method, the main method in your program is always static. So that the moment you execute your program, first thing is, first thing which is done is it executes the main method. If it would have needed any object reference, it would not be executing at first the main method. That is why it is declared as static. Okay. So void is a return type. Static void. Void means you are not returning anything. Void is return type. You are not returning any value there. That's why it is declared void. Okay, now, so this was about the static method. What if we have any static static value equals to So we have a static integer value. Now in every constructor, everywhere, so I have declared that static. Okay. Either I can just go to the method section and I can say the static value You can see it. I am not. I just make you understand. Let me just complete. This is common to all the methods. The value, because that is static. Now, if I execute it, the static value is five thousand. The static value is five thousand five thousand. You can see I'm not returning any value here. I'm not giving like I have for other integers. For other for other integers I have return some value. For other integers I have passed some value for in the 
for the constructor but for static I have not passed any value and still we are able to see it okay I have a question yes so for the display you use public static void but for the value you just use static you didn't like is there a difference the value I used for what no like for display you said public static void display but then for value you just said static int why why for, why can't for display can you just say static display no. You want to say that, can I remove this void or not, right? Is it your question? The void and the public, yeah. No, it will give you an error. Because the method will always have the return type. See, what is it saying? Set method return type to void. Or set method return type to void or change it to constructor because the constructor will never have the return type all right yeah now what if i remove this access modifier public what will happen you can't access it to any other package correct so when you the default access modifier is private if you do not say anything like for our class even we have not said anything it is public private or anything so if you don't say anything it's going to be private okay okay now I'm giving you something to do based on whatever we have done right now okay first of all do one thing create a simple program to execute a constructor okay. create a program to execute a constructor in constructor will display to your constructor will display a message that this is a default constructor. All right. Sir? Okay. Yes. Do it. Please. So you study in eleventh standard, Satwit. Yeah. Okay, great. Which all subject do you study? Math, English, Social Studies, Science. Okay, I just wanted to know if the course curriculum is different from India than in USA. <laughs> because um, these are the subjects that the students study generally in India as well uh, besides two more subjects that we study here Hindi and Sanskrit that I'm sure it, uh, it won't be there right
Okay, I'm just putting uh, you on mute, Sadik, but I'm here. Once you are done, please let me know. Okay. Uh, Sati, can you hear me?
Okay, so are you done? Um, so I did the whole program except for when I defined like the constructor, like class constructor, it says there's an error. Hello? Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. So, okay, the name of the class cannot be constructor. Constructor, okay, let's see. So, you are saying public class constructor and then you have, then you have, so this is not a class, this is a method, right? So, you will say public public constructor. Class is a keyword which is used to define the class, not a method. Okay? Remember it. Now, the declaration string x will be done will be done here before declaring the constructor. So, after the curly bracket that you have opened after the class, hit, a, hit the enter key and then say s the capital S will, uh, and then a string, a string name or x equals to, in the inverted commas, whatever the name is, no brackets. There, there won't be any bracket because you are just declaring something. It is a default constructor. Okay, good. Okay, semicolon at the end. Okay, now I remove this. Okay, say system dot out dot print line. And 
and x. Just say x without inverted comma, without inverted comma, because you need the value of x, right? Semicolon. Now execute your program. So it will show the value of x. What is the value of x? It is a default constructor. All right. Sadhvik, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we discuss about the static keyword. We have discussed about constructor, right? I want you to work on this, and then I also today want to talk about this keyword. Okay. We have not talked about this. T H I S. The keyword. This. Then we talked about constructor overloading. So this is a keyword. Keyword, and what it does is. Current object. So when I said this dot x equals to five, it means the this is referring to the this is referring to the object of x, and it's creating a value for the variable x. Okay. so this can be used to refer the current class in instance variable so x is a variable right so this can be used to refer it that's what we did in the constructor so if somebody ask you what is this what is this keyword in java you will say this is a reference variable Okay, this is a reference variable which helps you to refer the class object, class variable. Okay, these two are what is the static keyword and what is the this keyword. These two are important concepts. Okay, generally the keyword this is used to refer the variable of the current class. and that that's what we did here in our class in our class we referred the variables of our class the variables of our class are x and y in order to refer these two variables i use this dot x this dot y okay now for tomorrow i'm giving you some work to do program to show constructor overloading okay write a program for student details like name roll number school name that Name is a static keyword. This school name refers to a common value for all the students. Okay. So the class name will be a student. It will have three attributes: name, roll number, school name. Where you will already say school name equals to. X Y Z public school. Right, so it will be a static, static string school name. 
All right. write a program to add two numbers okay. and say it's result. So we we'll have two methods. One is to take input. One is to show the of the numbers. Okay. Yeah. What is your question? So the name and the roll number will I get to decide the name and the roll number or uh, the person seeing the program? So like you have to use like a system dot in. No. You will just define it. You will use the constructors, like I passed values in our constructor, what did we do? We passed the values to the constructors, right? We did not take any input. In this as well, you don't need to take any input in the student detail. You will be passing values to the constructors. Okay? Okay. Okay, and the first one is constructor overloading. It means it will it will have multiple constructors which will have different type of variables. Okay. Alright, any other question? No, I'm good. Okay, good. See you tomorrow then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.